So, mailbag time again. Let's see what's in this one. Make sure you give me a thumbs up on the video if you like what you see. Give me any feedback down below as well. I'd like to hear what your, your opinions are. Positive or constructive only. So here we have some fuses. I think they're all the same. I'm not sure, actually. So these are like PCB mount fuses. Wire leads. 0.5 amp. Okay. Oh no, there's a selection. Oh, so that's 2 amps. And... 3 amps, 1 amp, and 5 amps. So 0.5, 1, 2, 3, and 5 amps. So I didn't have any of these particular fuses. There's been a few times I've had PCU map fuses and I've had to sort of wire one in instead and basically bodge it. And I keep meaning to buy some fuses like this. And as I was buying a bunch of fuses at the time, I was stocking up. I thought, ah, oh, I'll get some of these while I'm at it. I can't remember how much these were, but there'll be links down below anyway. There's always links down below for stuff which I can give you links for. So make sure you go and check those out if you're interested in buying any fuses like this. Uh, these sorts of things always come in handy. You don't have to use it in the repair. You can always use it as part of a project somewhere. You know, you're making a PCB. This is one that we knife users in. Users, what else can you say about them? There's a whole bunch more videos in this one as well. So if you want to stick around to the very end, if you start watching the whole video, it helps me quite a lot. It helps the channel. And also gives you opportunities to watch more videos at the end on the playlists, which are featured at the end of this video. Might be more mailbag videos you want to see, or some other repairs, or something like that. So, just saying. What are these? These are more buck converter modules. These are more variable ones as well. I showed these previously in the last mailbag too. So it's really handy to have. I've been waiting for a bunch of these to turn up, and it looks like I think I had some go missing. And either the ones that just arrived in the last mailbag or this mailbag, they took like four months, five months to get here. And obviously now they've arrived because I didn't buy this many. Well, I did, but I bought replacements to replace the reverse lot which went missing and I got refunded for. So that's why I got some free ones, so I suppose it's a good thing, but not so much for the seller. Your vehicle adjustment is up here, inputs and outputs on the boards on the back there. So in one side, out the other side, the niggers are joined together anyway. Good things to have in stock. Should put them in the parts drawers, and when you uh, do a repair, you can slot one of these. And these are, I think, they're rated at two or three amps, I think, something like that. Might be three amps. They're not bad, they're pretty versatile little things. If it does blow up, you just get another one out and put it in. Handy. Let me know about the new graphics as well, the new overlays I've been using, or just started using, which I've made not long ago. Wow, this took ages to arrive. <laughs> I'd completely forgotten about these. So what do we have here? 47k, 10k, 100k and 20k. So these are single in line resistor arrays. So these are 5 pin, dot there which donates pin 1. So this end here, that pin here would be the common pin. So that, in this case, is a 20k. So that's 20k to that pin, 20k to that pin, 20k to that pin, 20k to that pin. So these are really good for doing pull-up resistors or pull-down resistors on things like push buttons, stuff like that. So sometimes on microcontrollers you can use the internal pull-ups or pull-downs. But sometimes I actually prefer to use external ones. I don't like to rely on a microcontroller to do that. So when I like doing this kind of press button stuff, I always have external resistors. It's just the way I like to work. So yes, these are through-hole parts, obviously. But you can get surface mount ones as well. But three hole for me was just easier in this particular situation because it actually meant a bit less board space taken up actually. These are fairly quickly. Now this is prompted by Big Clive who did a video not long ago showing a rechargeable 9 volt battery. If I can get into the packet it'd be great. Let's find a piece of random steel laying around to leave my way in. All right, without breaking a fingernail. Reason of these, they've got a USB port built into them. Question is, is it really 1000 milliamp hours? don't know but quite good for some little things like the multimeters and things like that where I have to replace batteries I've had a couple of meters actually batteries getting quite low on them so I thought well, what I'd do is get these charge them up chuck the meters and see how they go because it's not a particularly critical system you know if a multimeter battery goes flat it's not really the end of the world just put another battery in now it did actually say anywhere yeah it does say it says lithium battery but I don't say much else does it but these are 9 volt batteries so I thought well, yeah I'll get a couple of them see how they go I mean the 
cheap. It's basically a circuitry up here and a charge circuit and then obviously in the bottom here is the actual pack so I can actually feel that one end's definitely a little heavier than the other. So this end will be the actual battery packs, probably uh, flat packs which are stacked up or something like that. Two of them. Let's see how they go. It's a fuse assortment. So I think that's all the fuses I actually ordered now. I think they've all arrived. 200 milliamps up to 20 amps in 5 by 20 mil sizes. So as you can see it's 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 10, 15 and 20. Now we've got a nice selection. Because I did have a whole bunch of fuses but I don't really have anything in this like 1 amp or less region. So I wanted to buy you know some of those. I thought well I might as well get an assortment because I don't have some of these other sizes. Like I don't have any 8 amp for example. And I, I think I've got a whole bunch of the 30 mil fuses. Yeah, I've got loads of 30 mils in like the 3 amp sizes, I think. Maybe the 10 amp as well. So I thought, well, I'll just get a bunch and just have done with it. And I'll have to worry about it again. I mean, that should do me years, most likely. I mean, one of the reasons I've got these is for those Datron multimeters I repaired recently. The fuses need replacing because I've changed from 120 volts up to 240 volts. Because of that, you're supposed to change the fuse to allow for a lower current because of the higher voltage, right? The same power. And I didn't actually have any small enough fuses, so now I've got some point twos, which would be good enough, I think. Can't exactly what it's supposed to be now, but hopefully it's point twos. I did get some point ones as well. Got those in the previous mailbag. So, yeah, anyway, we've got fuses there. So, yeah. What's in this thing? Oh, uh, my ram knife has let me down. Right. This looks oh, awkward. I'll be back. Okay, set the packet. Good packaging. This is for a broken iPhone, which I picked up recently. Let's slide that out. So yes, this is a very broken iPhone. Apparently it is a functional phone, but it's in a bad way, bad condition. So let's have a close look at it and see what we're actually dealing with. So as you can see, the screen is completely mounted, but you know, that's just a screen. Button is there and clicks. The bottom is that bent or is it just a screen sticking up? I'm not sure. I need to check for bends. Let's get something to check it with. Got a handy dandy PCB way ruler, which will be straight. So let's just look on this way first. Check for bend. Well, the screen's going to be pretty flat, yes. Casing is looking pretty good that side, that's flat that way. And that way is also looking pretty good. There's a very slight bend on this corner, I think. Start the other way. Oh no, that's looking alright. It's insignificant. Let's check it this way. It's also looking alright, actually. Yeah, I was thinking it was bent because of this corner looking like this. I'm not sure. This is an iPhone 6S. Now is that split or is it a normal join? I'm not sure. Just here. I, actually, I sh should get my phone because I have an iPhone 6S. I should just look at it, shouldn't I? But it might be split. It looks like a split to me, actually. It definitely doesn't look quite right there. If you look in that corner, so it's sticking out slightly. And catching. So I think that probably is a split there. Probably being dropped in that corner or something. But you can see it's all scratched up and it's a bit of a mess. Not been looked after very well. Does have the SIM card slot at least. Let's check the top flatness as well. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Let's do a diagonal flatness, shall we? Diagonally. Yeah, that's looking alright. This way is also looking alright. So it's actually looking fairly flat. So that's that's good. And this is what looks like damage around this socket. Let me go and get my phone and go and find out. So, yeah, I checked my phone and my phone does not have any splits next to here, so yes, this is definitely damaged. But that's fine, I was, you know, I know the casing is basically knackered. What I purchased this for is the internals. I can get another casing, you know, you can buy a liquid damaged phone or something which has been iCloud locked or whatever. As long as it's got a decent chassis, you can transplant most of the insides over into the chassis. And not have to worry about it, you know, then you've got a rubbish chassis with a locked board, it doesn't matter. Then you can use that log ball for parts or whatever, you know. So you can see it's like it's probably been in someone's pocket with their keys or or change or something. Who knows? But 
yeah, it's had a hard life, you can see. I mean, it's got like impact mark here, which is quite interesting. Let's try turning it on, see if it powers up. It does power up. And as you can see, the screen's looking pretty awful. Now, the casing is, you know, apart from that bit of damage there, it's not that bad, it's just ugly. But I have purchased a broken phone, another broken phone. It's 20% charged, no SIM, that's expected because, you know, there's no SIM in it. Finishing up iPhone. He wants me to finish setting up the iPhone. Finish setting up. Touch ID. No, I don't want that. Set up Touch ID later. We'll do that. Don't use. Okay, passcode stuff. Well, that's a long passcode. Six digits. Hmm. It seems to basically be working. Touch is obviously working. Haven't came to do iCloud or anything like that. Wi-Fi is not currently connected and stuff like that. So the battery is very flat. I should just give this a charge up as well and make sure it's okay in that regard. Let me see if Wi-Fi is even working. Let's put it on the network. Okay, it's on Wi-Fi. So that's now enabled. There's the battery. So we've got the battery. See what that says. Should I show a percentage? Battery house health is service. 77%. Meh, just a battery. I need to change the screen the battery, obviously. But yeah, it seems to at least be functional. Fingers crossed it's not too bad. 15% charge now. I just want to see it drop down a little bit. Camera, see so look at the camera, see if that's working. Um, yeah, allow it to use it. So front or well, rear camera's working. Let's check the front camera. Give your faces. Yeah. So that's working. That's good. So the camera's all working. So it looks like it's basically functional. Which is great, so um, I'll probably do a repair video on this thing showing, I don't know, maybe swapping out the casing, battery, screen, it depends on what I do. I mean, I might swap the battery and screen out, but then if I'm going to swap out the casing, do I really need to bother with that? Probably not. Moving on. This will be a little future video at some point. I'm just waiting for the other chassis to turn up. I already have a spare screen. I've already got a spare battery, so I've got the parts I need to actually repair this phone. I'm um, even got docking it to us. I actually should check in there. Do you see how dirty it looks? Can you see in there? Does that look dirty? What do you reckon? Slip it over. Actually, it looks fairly clean. It looks alright, actually. Doesn't look too bad. So, if you want to see that future video and repair this phone, I'm likely to strip out this housing and put it into a new housing. That was the plan at least. So if you want to make sure you catch that, make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Don't subscribe twice because that unsubscribes you and that's not a good thing. Nobody wants that, especially me. If you want to see that future video, make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon to get notified. And also watch my playlist as well. I've got an Apple playlist where I do my MacBook and iPhone repairs, stuff like that, anything I've worked on in the past, they will go into that playlist. This will also end up in that playlist as well. You also just come back in the future, you know, in a, a couple of weeks time maybe, and the video would have been published by then. You can go to the playlist and be able to find it. I mean, that's things to do. Just suggesting options. Catch you later, and thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye. Drop a red knife.